Um, next up, we have a gentleman who is going to talk about the future of blockchain interoperability. It's taken me many years to be able to say that stupid word. Um, he is from the project Evmost, an EVM compatible uh, chain on Cosmos. Please welcome to the stage, Frederico. Hey everyone, um, thanks for having me today. I'm Federico kunze kulmer and I'm the co-founder of Evmos, which is an EVM compatible chain on Cosmos. Today I'm gonna talk about Evmos and the future of blockchain interoperability. So first, what is Evmos? Evmos is a fully IVC enabled uh, EVM chain on Cosmos. What this means is that in the blockchain ecosystem, there are three different interoperability clusters. From one side, we have the EVM ecosystem, then we have Cosmos ecosystem, and finally, we have Polkadot ecosystem. Beforehand, these three interoperability clusters were completely isolated between themselves, whereas Cosmos transactions were only, be, like, were only able to flow within Cosmos SDK chains, uh, Polkadot the same way, and Ethereum or EVM-based chains were only, be, were only able to send transactions via bridges in the, in the EVM ecosystem. With Evmos, we are going to be providing um, interoperability for all these three uh, interoperability clusters, the EVM world, the Polkadot world, and also the Cosmos world by providing IVC-enabled uh, blockchain. So Evmos is going to be the point of entry from all these different ecosystems into the Cosmos uh, interchain world. We're going to be doing this by um, implementing IVC and EVM bridges so that all the EVM compatible chains like Moonbeam, uh, Polygon, Ethereum, and others can bring their assets and liquidity directly into the Cosmos ecosystem. But interoperability is not the only thing that um, the, the only value proposition from Cosmos. We're also implementing a novel tokenomics and also a novel airdrop mechanics so that our users can be fully aligned in, aligned in the long term. So for EIP-1559, there was back in the days like a huge fight and discussion between like developers and the miners of, for the adoption of EIP-1559. Like how miners saw Ethereum was that the developers were pushing for this format that will uh, create better user experience for the users by, by um, creating this fee market uh, to, in order to predict, better predict the different fees. But in reality, the Ethereum ecosystem is, like on the, on the, specifically the users, um, have different like, types of users. One of them is like holders, miner, developers, uh, application developers, and also DeFi users. So the core developers were only one small part of the entire Ethereum ecosystem. So beforehand, before EIP 5059, um, all the fees will go to the miners, and after EIP 1559 was included, the, this fee was split between the base fee and the priority tip. So, and the base fee was burned. So that made the miners super angry and went all against the developers. This is why we decided to incorporate and, and create the DAP store. The DAP store is Evmos decentralized marketplace for application developers and users, where instead of burning the EIP 1559 base fee, we're splitting it between the developers and the users. So this creates long-term long -term alignment between the developers and the validators in the ecosystem, because now developers can also be part of the ecosystem by sharing the transaction fees with the validators. And this is going to create a long-term incentive alignment for the different applications that are going to be popular in the Evmos ecosystem. We currently have, for example, Diffusion, 
the on 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 other applications that have been creating these um, different incentives also for the users, not only for the developers, but we are also incentivizing users um, with our um, usage incentive model. So the problem with all of these liquidity mining programs and DeFi programs is that um, it's not su sustainable in the long run because um, it's usually a one-off uh, payment to the different applications. Um, and it's not community owned, not fully transparent on what are the criteria uh, for these applications to get some of these fees and, and, and incentives. And it doesn't really reflect the traction of the project and the adoption for the different users. And also finally, the TVL doesn't mean that there will be more users adopting these different DeFi applications and in general the protocol. And that's why we incorporated user incentives in our uh, in our uh, token model, so that applications and users can get 25% um, of the block uh, of the tokens minted on every epoch, um, so that these can go directly to users that interact with these um, smart contracts. And how does it work? Um, developers or any user through governance can register an incentive through a governance proposal. So you define a contract specifically that you want to incentivize, how much allocation you want to put into this, um, into this specific contract, and you also define, define how much, um, like for example, like the uh, duration of this incentivization. Once a proposal is approved, all the transactions will start collecting um, gas into these different gas pools um, so that users will be able to share a pro rata uh, amount of tokens to the total amount that was spent of gas that was spent in this contract. And finally, after one week, you will be able to um, collect uh, the rewards from these users, usage incentives. So right now, we already have an uh, application on Evmos that was able to successfully create an incentivized application proposal for their smart contract. And they're able to incentivize all their users bef besides all the LP farming incentives that they have implemented natively on their protocol. All their users are already getting transaction uh, all these incentives from Evmos tokens, besides all the diffusion tokens. So here we can see, for example, the address for the um, diffusion um, application, all the gas that you're getting rebated, and the current gas that you have uh, used by, interact by interacting with this application. And then you can see, for example, what's going to be your next payout, and you can basically gamify all the user experience for interacting with a smart contract. So for the Evmos token models, the developers propose the usage incentives to bring more growth to their applications. This drives users and rewards them with more Evmos tokens. Then the users spend these Evmos tokens to use the different decentralized application services. And finally, with these um, transaction fees, the developers get 50% of these fees from the DApp store so that they can also get more TVL, which again, also incentivizes all these, all these users and developers to create more incentives to drive more users. So this is creating a positive reinforcement cycle in order to create more, a more sustainable growth for the protocol itself. So Evmos, through these different incentivization models in the token model, is able to incentivize and align all the interest in the long term for the different model, for the different types of users that we have in our platform. Validators, holders, um, DeFi users, application developers, and core developers in the same, in the same way. And now I'm going to talk a little bit more about interoperability and the next future, the future of interoperability. So Avmos um, implemented an IVC enabled ERC20. How does this work? So usually you have from one side you have like the Cosmos environment that is processing all these Cosmos transactions, IVC, staking, etc. And then you have the AVM. Usually 
these transactions will not compatible between each other because of the different transaction format, the different types, et cetera. And it's basically another, um, another runtime within the chain. We created a model that allows you to, through governance, create a mapping, one-to-one -one mapping between like the tokens that are represented as ERC-20 and Cosmos. So you can natively convert all the ERC-20 tokens to, um, to Cosmos representation so that they that can be traded in the different uh, applications in the Cosmos ecosystem. For example, Diffusion, again, also incorporated this on their testnet. Um, so they have, for example, here's an IVC representation of the Grav uh, token, uh, which is from the Gravity Bridge chain. Um, and they are able, through this ERC-20 conversion, create a, a liquidity pool between like the Evmos token and this IVC token that was sent via IVC from Gravity to Evmos and then converted to an ERC-20. This is, with this model, users are able to now interact with the different applications and protocols in the same way without having to care whether or not the representation is an ERC-20 or a Cosmos asset. This is going to open all the possibilities for the different applications. And now, going to a more technical side of things, IVC precompiles. So IVC precompiles are going to enable um, different EVM-compatible chains on the Cosmos ecosystem, like Evmos and Kronos, which both share the EVM module that we are maintaining, um, to have a direct connection between like smart contracts. What this means is that a smart contract that is living and deployed on the uh, Evmos EVM environment is going to be able to send an IVC transaction to a smart contract that is deployed on Kronos EVM. And what is going to benefit, like what's going to be the benefit of this IVC precompile is going to enable all of this interchain composability. Now, smart contracts have to be deployed on each of the single EVM-based chains in order to get more users. With this IVC precompile, they're only going to be able, they can, for example, like deploy only on Evmos or only on other EVM chains and still benefit from like the composability of interacting with each of the independent smart contracts that have been deployed. So this has helped a ton with horizontal scalability. The contracts will be able to interact no matter where they're deploying. And this is also going to enable more EVM chains on Cosmos, making Evmos the native EVM hub of the Cosmos ecosystem because it will be the main service provider and the main infrastructure provider for all these different applications, and also because we're providing all these core infrastructure for the EVM module on the Cosmos SDK. And finally, I want to talk a little bit about the IVC Ethereum transactions. IVC Ethereum transactions, basically what they are is they're enabling non-EVM transactions to natively interact with smart contracts on an EVM chain. I'm going to talk about this particular example between Evmos and Sommelier. So, for example, Sommelier is a coprocessor for Ethereum. Basically, runs like different strategies for portfolio management in a decentralized way. Um, they do this by using Gravity Bridge, which is uh, a bridge to Ethereum. So they're able to batch the transactions and send them to Ethereum. With this mechanism, IVC. Uh, Ethereum transactions, they will be able to send a transaction via IVC directly to, for example, Aave that will be deployed on Evmos, and then get all the transaction data uh, so that they can manage the portfolio for the different users that they have by using like a specific IVC transaction. So in this case, they have this Quartz module that is basically sending an encoded contract call to uh, Ethereum they're all going to be able to do this same mechanism, but for Evmos, which is going to be hugely beneficial for their users. Um, because it's not only going to be enabling like interchain composability within the Evmos ecosystem and also horizontal scalability, um, because the smart contracts will not only be bounded within the EVM um, world, other non-EVM chains will be still able to use these uh, smart contracts and applications. Um, it's also going to, and this is the most important part, it's going to be, uh, the latency is going to be way lower 
and it's going to be way better user experience for their users that don't have to wait for the entire confirmation period on Ethereum and, and back. So now, through IVC, within the matter of minutes, you'll be able to send Ethereum transactions um, with a better user experience that you have currently using different types of bridges to Ethereum on the Cosmos ecosystem. And this is all going to be enabled by Evmos. And finally, we have shared security. Evmos, as I mentioned before, will be the main service provider for EVM-based chains in the Cosmos ecosystem. We see all these different decentralized applications that in the future will spin out from Evmos to be their own um, application-specific blockchain on an EVM. They probably have like a, a specific runtime uh, or like specific precompiles to disable other types of smart contracts to be deployed. But for example, like if we have like Ape, um, Ape, uh, Ape coin on on an uh, Ethereum chain, um, deriving shared security to Evmos, they will be able to only deploy. Uh, NFT-related smart contracts or NFT-related marketplace for their specific application-specific use case. So Evmos will be able to seamlessly provide user experience to all these applications so they don't have to um, um, get a block explorer, interact with MetaMask, interact with a graph. This is all going to be enabled via IVC. So these different EVM chains will be able to interact natively with um, Ethermint, uh, sorry, with Evmos through IVC um, by deriving secu security directly from Evmos. And this is going to be looking like this is the current network, uh, IVC network of all the chains that are currently connected to Evmos. And it's going to be the looking the same way, but for all these different decentralized applications that are going to be deriving security directly from Evmos with all these different connections. So, um, Evmos is really excited to be pioneering the uh, interoperability for EVM-based chains and also expanding the interoperability of Cosmos to the EVM world. Thank you so much.